Welcome to Smart in the City, the Babel podcast where we bring together top actors in the smart city arena, sparking dialogues and interactions around the stakeholders and themes most prevalent for today's citizens and tomorrow's generations. I am your host, Tamlin Shimizu, and I hope you will enjoy this episode and gain knowledge and connections to accelerate the change for a better urban life. Smart in the City is brought to you by Babel Smart Cities. We enable processes from research and strategy development to co-creation and implementation. To learn more about us, please visit the Babel platform at babel-smartcities.eu. So democracy, what do you usually associate with this word? This is a new topic for us on the podcast, and I think you're really going to like this angle. We have talked about citizen engagement, but how does democracy shape the way that we innovate and shape our cities? What do we know so far and what do we still have to learn? Well, we're going to Barcelona to explore this topic, the winner of the European Capital of Democracy this year. And for that, I have, of course, for you, the perfect guest. His name is Arnau Monterre. He's the Director of Democratic Innovation at Barcelona City Council. Welcome onto the show. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here today. Pleasure to have you. I'm really excited about this topic. Um, as I mentioned, we, we haven't really spoken about it in, in this level, in this scope before. So to dig right in, I have a teaser question. Do you, uh, first question, do you like ice cream? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so second question, uh, if democracy were a flavor of ice cream, what would it be and why? <laughs> wow, this is a very, very difficult question. <laughs> you don't have to give a solid logical reason behind it, just any reason. <laughs> yeah, we need consensus, but we need conflict because democracy is about that. And then we should have like more uh, common tastes like uh, lemon or mm. whatever or chocolate. But then we need to also confront with other more uh, uh, other dates of, of ice cream. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. All right. So maybe we, we have to take a vote to get on a consensus for that one. Um, but I now want to know really about you. Um, I want to know about your background, your role. What led you here into this position? Uh, okay, I'm the director of the Democratic Innovation in the city of Barcelona, and I have been running this department since 2019, more or less, and I've been uh, in charge of different projects at the City 11 related to citizen participation, democracy, and also related to uh, digital technologies. And I am one of the co-founders of the DESI team, the, the digital platform for citizen participation which is a project that uh, it has been uh, it has been implemented to a lot of different cities around the world. Uh, we are talking about more than uh, 2 million of users around the world, uh, wow. 500 installations, uh, used it in 30 countries, and this is an open source solution. Uh, yeah, that sounds really interesting. Um, so I think we want to get back to that. Are you originally from Barcelona? Uh, yes, from the metropolitan area of, of Barcelona. Okay, okay perfect. Um, good. So let's talk about uh, the platform in a little bit. I first want to touch on the, the topic of democracy. Um, what is democracy and what does it mean to you? Uh I really like the, the the initial concept of democracy. Democracy comes from the the, the Greek, and and it means that when the, the people has the power, when the, the people in the or the citizens has the the, the capacity to to govern the the city, the a region, or a country, or a, another uh, the, the the European level. And I think that this rooted idea of democracy when the people. Uh, has the capacity to decide about the, the common things of our everyday life. That sounds really good to me. Um, so for you, so for uh, Barcelona, the European capital of democracy, what does that really mean? And what does that entail? What will Barcelona do in the next year to like kind of uphold this title? Yeah, initially the the to receive this recognition is uh, is a kind of yes, the recognize that the things that we have been doing in Barcelona 
in the last uh, eight years, it has been a very uh, has an international impact and has a, a has a creating a a, a, glo- a global reference and how we are innovating in the city in the way that uh, citizens are involved in different uh, participatory process actions and other things. For example, one of the most important things in the city has been the participatory budgeting process where the people decide how to invest in the city uh, more than 30 million of euros. And they propose projects and prioritize and after that they, they vote on the most voted projects. Now it they has been implemented during the last years and now you can go there and, and uh, enjoy the, the, this project proposed, proposed by citizens. That's cool. Can, can you name, like, can you tell us about some of those projects so that we have an idea about what are they voting on? What do the citizens want? Uh, there are more than 70 projects, but one, for example, a new a new uh, playground in, the, in a school or to create a, a new street without, without cars or renew uh, a public uh, garden or create cycle lines. There are a, a, a mm-hmm. huge variety of projects uh, at the city level. That's really cool. Uh, question. Do you think that citizens know best what they need? Or do you think sometimes government should step in and say, actually, this is this is not what you need? Because, uh, for example, I guess one situation is like cars, parking, right, is like a huge thing. The city is like trying to take away parking spots, trying to say, and the citizens are like, no, no. But actually data shows once you take away those cars, people enjoy the streets much more. Um, how do you kind of like reconcile this? I think that we have to create the channels to have like a permanent conversation between, we talk about co-creation. We need to know uh, the needs of the citizens, but at the whole level, because the, the citizens are uh, are diverse and they are a, a different variety of citizens. There are people that has a specific needs and other with other needs and and the government has to manage that. And sometimes this means conflicts because the interests sometimes are, are choking. For example, in the city, we are seeing the battle between the people who want more cars and the people who want um, less cars. And we have to manage that. This is the, the things that the government has to do. But we, I really believe in the idea was to have this uh, permanent negotiation and also to explore the possibility of collective intelligence because if we get the information and the, the demons from citizens who knows perfectly the city but also we can receive the input from the experts but also the, the, the managers of the city and also the politicians that then we can start to create something more intelligent but we need to respect principles the principle of democracy basically really good answer collective intelligence that's that's an interesting one do you want to kind of give, give our listeners a little bit of like insight into how you view collective intelligence yes it's, it's uh, th- this idea to produce because for example when we have an election and we are electing uh, the mayor and maybe 10 or, or 15 uh, conciliars but these 15 people they don't have the whole knowledge of, of what happens with the, with the with the city and we have a lot of huge challenges for the 21st century and the only way to do that is uh, combining different knowledge that we have on the city uh, but attending uh, definitely a, a general purpose but we need to know what happens the people who live and the the people what are the needs of the people what are the problems what are the the the, the, the specific things that happens on the city and the only way to do that is asking and working together with the people to understand the needs of the city very good um so uh getting back to, into barcelona so barcelona of course is known for you know really rich history and really vibrant culture um and how do you think that this this uh, barcelona's heritage inspires innovative approaches to democracy in the modern era uh barcelona is 
all the time creating. We have an amazing history of social movements. Uh, that the experience is here uh, 100 years ago uh, on the, the the unions, or for example, the, the fight for uh, labor rights on on 1920s, for example. Or we have a very interesting tradition. Or for example, 200 years ago, we have something uh, the first. Uh, Council by sortition, call it the 100 Council, and it was the, the first innovation, democratic innovation in the city, and it comes from a long time ago. And I think that we have a very rich um, uh, civil society, uh, uh, the, the, the civil society organizations, and a, a lot of uh, different neighborhoods association and uh, scholars and sports and social movements and people defending different rights at the city level. We have a very productive city in terms of uh, in terms of democracy and quality and yeah and, and quality of the of our democracy. I love uh, looking at how the the city's culture and everything plays into innovation. So I, I think that's really interesting. Of course, Barcelona is a really prime example of that. Um, you, you already pres- provided a couple examples of projects or initiatives. Um, I want to give more space also to talk about specific um specific projects that kind of exemplify this intersection of democracy and innovation in Barcelona. Do you have any more that come to mind or do you want to elaborate on any of the ones you mentioned before? Yes, I have a lot. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to occupy everything with that. But for example, we ran uh, the last uh, in the last two years, we ran the two first uh, citizen assemblies created by sortition, one of 100 young people elected by sortition. And it was uh, really amazing because for the first time we uh, involve and engage young people who never uh, have been participated before. And they create a list of 25 demons to, and they send to the mayor and the, the, the measures uh they are in a moment that they are trying to execute by the, by the government, but it was a moment that where 100 young people were discussing during 12 weekends, a lot of time discussing and deliberating about the, their own needs and the, the future of young people. And this is a really innovative example. And the other one, we have the first uh, climate assembly at the city level with 100 people elected by sortition too. This is uh, the, the new uh, way for our citizen, uh, of citizen assemblies, but it's a, it's a new way to to work at the at the uh, at the city level, very specific topics, and it's a way to engage like different uh, people at the city level because we we receive people from the different districts and different origins and and with different uh, participatory cultures, and this is very interesting in because it's a, an an entrance door to the world of the democracy. This is just one example of that. We have other examples uh, running on the, uh, on the city level of, about innovation in, the, in participation. Those are great examples. I'm just wondering, are there a lot of, are you seeing a lot of participation from young people in the climate assembly as well? Uh, we try to uh, have uh, because when we create the, the sample and the sortition, we try to have uh, representation from the different ages, <clears throat> and uh, the 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 young assembly it was from 16 to 29, and the climate assembly we had like the uh, the the representation of young it was the same that the other ranges of uh, ages mm-hmm. was yeah. proportional. Okay, so an e- more equal representation. Yes, yes um, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I'm, that's touching on the point. Also, I wanted to ask you about, like, you can't think about democracy without thinking of, like, inclusivity um, and thinking about, how, like, how can we get, how can we develop more initiatives that are successful in ensuring that, like, marginalized voices are heard and represented in the discussions? Yeah, this is a very good question and probably one of the main challenges of any organization who wants to (laughs) 
improve their own uh, participatory systems and their own uh, democracy. Uh, we have to say, honestly, that is very difficult because you have to put a lot of effort on that. If you want to have a rich democracy, you have to put the conditions that this can happen. And the first thing that you need to engage people and to involve people is to have a political commitment. This is the first thing that I'm committed to participation. I'm committed to the results of the process and I'm committed to you. And this is the first sign that you have to give to the people if you want to involve them. This is the first thing. But then you need a lot of resources. You have to communicate in a different ways. You, know, you have to arrive to everyone. And you have to be flexible because the, the people, they, are, they have a lot of things, family charge and the works and the jobs and they, the, the, the studies. And you have to be flexible in terms of adaptation of the, of the needs. And also you have to provide the, the different channels to do that. Uh, and also you have to connect with their own real needs uh, and when we are talking about the, the poor people or the, the, the people who has less capacity to do that you have to put an extra effort for example if you want to involve the different communities at the city level you have to uh, communicate with them uh, with their different languages and uh, you need to work also in which way you communicate the, the, the things because, for example, we talk about participatory processes, but the citizens, sometimes they don't know what does mean a participatory process. You have to explain that is a way to be involved in some specific issue of the city. And you have to explain that because the people, we are losing the culture to be part of our city and to decide about our city. We delegate all the time. We delegate in the politicians voting or we delegate to others just uh, because I don't know that I, that I have this capacity. For example, in the schools, it's very difficult to work this why the schools don't know from the beginning that they have the capacity to be part of the decision making of their own city. And I think that this is why we need to award the democratic culture from the beginning, because if you know as a child that you have this capacity, then it's going to be easier to involve in other aspects of your everyday life. Is that the, the first way to empower people from the beginning? <laughs> really great tips. Yeah, really great tips. Um, in your role, you've seen, oh, as you mentioned, like lots of projects, lots of initiatives, um, probably pilot projects, some successful, some not so successful. Can you share any like very surprising outcomes? Like outcomes you didn't expect? Do you have anything in mind? Uh, yes, there are a lot of... Uh, there, for example, the, the first time when when we started uh, our digital platform for citizen participation on, on 2016, uh, we launched a process for uh, for the planning of the city for for four years, and we were collecting proposals. We received more than 10,000 proposals. <laughs> wow! And the city the city decided to study all proposals and answer all the proposals and they accept more than 70% uh, of the proposals and they develop these proposals and maybe it was like that the, the, the first more participated strategic planning process at the, at the global level for sure it was really amazing because for the first time you receive a direct answer from the city council saying we we are studying this and we're gonna uh, develop this uh, for example, one of the most surprising results that you, I don't know, maybe one of the most success is the, the, the cricket team of the group of young uh, Pakistan girls in, in the district of the city playing for a cricket field on their own district. And they, they were all the time playing cricket, but they didn't have the field. And they proposed this for the participatory budgeting and they win and they engage the, the, a lot of different people to vote for the project and and, and then now they have, they have a cricket very, field yeah we are building actually ah, okay. we are building the cricket in field province. but they yeah they were in the press in the bbc and a lot of uh, international press because it was a really amazing example of how a community uh, with a specific need uh, can can be a success 
Very good. Did you did you guys draw on any inspiration from other cities on on what to do in this? Or you really do you really feel like Barcelona is kind of, uh, I guess, leading the pact? Or how does it work? No, it's a combination. Also, mm -hmm. uh, we we receive a lot from from other cities and from other traditions. We receive a lot from the the the, the indignado. Indignados movement and the social movements here at the beginning of 20s and 2010s, the 2011 exactly, uh, specifically. But also we receive uh, inputs from the, the when the, the Icelandic were uh, rewriting their own constitution, or for example, uh, from Madrid uh, or from Helsinki, their experience on participatory budgeting, also the tradition on citizen participation on, on Brazil, etc. We have received a lot of different inputs. Yeah, really important, I think. Um, so my last question before I give you the open floor is, if um, you had lo no limitations, if you could implement one bold and unconventional idea to further enhance democracy and innovation in Barcelona, what would it be and why? Uh, What's your dream? <laughs> yeah, my dream. <laughs> I always dream to have like because we are running this 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 digital platform for citizen participation, and we open process where where we allow people uh, to create proposals and uh, give supports and comment, but. We always mediate this as a city council. We are we open a specific process where you can do this. But my dream is to have something more self-governed, where anyone can create everything. Mm. Uh, you can express for yourself on social networks like Twitter or TikTok or or Instagram. Uh, I will really love to have this also at this like more instant political or institutional level where the government provide you a digital infrastructure to be part of in a secure way in, with uh, democratic guarantees, uh, preserving digital rights, but you can have there a voice and you can have a way and a, a, and a capacity to express yourself and to connect with others and organize things together. How we could have a As, as, uh, we always talk about political network. It's not a social network, it's a political network to, to address uh, different political initiatives without intermediation. How we can promote the, the, the self-organization of the people at the city level. This would be nice. But all the, all the politicians have Twitter account and they are communicating there. Why they don't come to our platform to do that and has this horizontal communication mm, I understand yeah so you would you would like them to everything to be centralized onto the platform right um, yes. yeah yeah good um, yeah it's really hard to get people to use a platform it sounds like you've been very successful actually um, in, in for the most part um, yeah we have we have here in Barcelona this uh, 150,000 people registered Uh, this is the 10% of the people who live in Barcelona, but we, we need more people. Actually, there are great numbers in, term, in terms of participation, but uh, we need to involve more people. Yeah. Uh, but more also in terms of quality, not just in quantity, in quality into having the good debates, because the important that the, the platform provides you the, the capacity to participate when you want and at the, at the different levels. You don't have to create a proposal if you don't want or if you don't have any idea. <laughs> Sometimes it's like maybe I don't have a proposal, but I, I really appreciate this idea. But they could give uh, feedback on other ideas. and yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The idea of collective intelligence is that the different levels of contribution at the different levels of scales of participation. Love it. Love this discussion. So um, with that, I, I want to give you the open floor. Is there anything that you really want the listeners to know today that you didn't get the chance yet to talk about? Uh, yeah, actually, there is a, a huge challenge a huge challenge in 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 our present, uh, and also this is related to the to the European Capital of Democracy as an opportunity to open debates around this. But 
what happens <laughs> with our democracy because we are just moving in this direction to have like more representative democracy in terms that we are just voting and uh, we forget about <laughs> the politics until the next uh, election and how we can create uh, a, a and promote a participative democracy where the citizens can have a voice and a capacity to be involved in the everyday government government uh, at the city level, but also at the, the other institutional levels. Because uh, I think that we are having to face a lot of problems, the, the hate speech and the, the, the rise of uh, alt-right at the European, but also at the global level. But we have to see how through democracy and through a democratic way and involvement we can not just pres preserve and to have the to have our rights safe but also how we can win other important rights at, at the global level we have a war here we have a lot of inequalities we have the people dying in the borders of europe and how we can address that because these are huge problems that we cannot uh we have to see and we have to face and we have to face in a democratic way we cannot say just no everyone in their own country and and we have to be very <laughs> very national position to exclude the people who is different. We need to see how we can create more democratic, more inclusive, and more uh, respectful, right societies at the global level. This is a very, uh, a very important issue. Very nice words. Um, so thank you for that. Um, now with that, I will move us on to the our segment, um, and this is a segment called Trial and Error. Trial and Error. What went wrong? What mistakes were made along the way? And more importantly, what lessons were learned? So I wanted to kind of flip this um, segment a little bit differently than how we usually phrase it um, and ask about what you think the biggest trial and error was when looking at democracy back in history and how we cannot make the same mistakes again. Uh, in in our in our case, in the case of Spain, the the, the biggest mistake is the, the when we have the a dictator here in after the civil war on 1939. The, the worst thing that we have had here in our country, and we we still have this heritage in the country, uh, 100 years later. But. Uh, but yes, I think that this is one of the big mistakes at the, at the national level, definitely. How can we not make that mistake again? How do we prevent then how in a global scale do we let democracy, you know, win and not dictators? I think that the best way to ensure that we cannot repeat this is... Uh, ensuring that everyone has uh, rights and has uh, ensuring the human rights, but also ensuring the social rights and ensuring that everyone is in the same race and do, we are not leaving people uh, behind in terms of uh, the live uh, the, the live a better life. Yeah. I think that this is a way to prevent uh, this kind of historically involution because if we have rights and if if the people knows about what does mean to live in a in a, in a collective society in a common way if you can guarantee that the people will defend that but this is why we have to create and ensure and uh, that the, 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 the rights are strong and the, the, the capacity to defend as a to defend ourselves as a society is, is a strong yeah, very good. Um, thanks so much for, for those answers. And then I get to the last question of the, the interview. Um, and this is a question we ask every single guest. Um, I want to hear from your perspective. To you, what is a smart city? Uh, to me, a smart city uh, is a city who... I, I say who because has this capacity yeah. to be as a, as a, as a kind of uh, 
collective uh, and human. But uh, a smart city is a, is a city that includes the cities and the civil society organizations and the social uh, actors in the, in the process to design uh, democratically the, the, the city, the needs of the city, the services of the city. Uh, actually, to me, uh, a smart city is a democratic city. It's a city where the citizens has a, a, a very important role and the government work together with, with the citizens and, and, the, the, and the, 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 the society to ensure that they have a, a better place to live, to enjoy and to, yeah, and to be part of. I thought you might say that, <laughs> that a smart city is a democratic city. Some, for some reason, I had this idea you might, you why, might why, advocate I, for that. I, I don't know why you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weird, right? Um, yeah, wonderful. So um, thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing all your expertise on the topic. I think uh, this, this kind of scope in the discussion is really interesting when we're thinking about building smarter, uh, more sustainable, future-proof cities, um, including everybody's voices in it so thank you so much for coming on the show and and really sharing your expertise here thank you very much our pleasure and to all of our listeners don't forget you can always create a free account on babel-smartcities.eu to find out about smart city projects solutions implementations and connect with more people uh, so thank you very much as well until next time Thank you all for listening. I'll see you at the next stop on the journey to a better urban life.